Today we're going to take a look at Power BI Dashboard in a Day Exercise 2. This begins on page 16 with transforming your data right here. First of all, we're going to launch the Power BI Desktop application. And from here, we'll see recent files. We can go ahead and open our Exercise 2, pick up where we left off from Exercise 1. Just a quick check over here on data models. We see a number of different tables from exercise one. So we'll be able to pick up right where we left off. We'll explore methods to transform data in the data model, such as renaming tables, updating data types, and appending tables together. So let's go down to our first step. And this particular exercise is going to go for a few pages, all the way down to page 29, where it ends with step 52. So let's go ahead and begin. Under queries, we're going to minimize transform binary. So let's go over to that. And this will be the query editor window for renaming tables. From the Power BI main screen, we're going to click Edit Queries on the toolbar. That gives us a secondary pop up window where we need to do our work. Here we see Home, Transform, Add Columns, View. Under Queries, click Minimize, Transform Binary from the International Sales Folder. So there we have it. OK, kind of folding up that transform. All right. Rename them in the query settings below. BI Sales Fact becomes Sales. So we'll do a right click rename. We'll type this over as sales. BI date will become date. Right click on that one, do rename. Geo will become geography, spelled out. Another right click rename. Manufacturer will become capital M without the BI prefix. Same for product. And finally, international sales with a space. So that's one way we can take our source queries and give them a more friendly name, meaningful to our users who are making reports. Next, we're going to look at the fill feature. Some data is not always in the right format. You can clean and prepare data to meet your needs. Let's start with the date query. Notice there are a lot of null values. This is because fields like year are populated on the first, blank thereafter. We get rid of nulls and fill it with values. OK. From the left panel, select the date query. We'll go ahead and do that. Using a control key, select year, quarter, month, month, name, month, ID fields. Notice now all the null values are filled at the appropriate. OK. Interesting. Transform, fill down. So let's go ahead and take a look at that one. And from the ribbon, transform, fill down. Year, quarter, month, name, month, month ID. Up here in the top right corner, up here in the top right corner is where we see the transform section. Up here on the home ribbon, we do have a transform section, but this is different. We're going to want to flip over to the transform tab. That changes our toolbar. And here we will see a fill button with the command for fill down. And this is what we need to go ahead and populate values all the way down the table. Click on that. Now we see our values. Excellent. That brings us down to step seven. Here on step seven, we're looking at the manufacturer query where ID and data is laid across in rows and organized horizontally. We need to rotate that to vertical, which is going to be a transform transpose. This will turn rows into columns and let the data be more useful. Back over in Power BI, if we look at Manufacturer, we see all of that. And we can do Transform Transpose, just clicking this one button up here in the top left. And now our data is organized in two clean vertical columns, bringing us down to step nine. Select Home, use first row as headers. That's over here on the right hand side under the transform grouping. Use first row as headers. That moved that first row of data up to a more meaningful header for our query. That completes section nine. 
Here at step 10, we we're going to use the split feature on the product name. So we'll open the product query. We have a column called product, which when we zoom in, actually contains both a name and an ID together. We need to split that. So let's go ahead and look at the home split column by delimiter for product. So we're going to split a column by a delimiter. So there's a couple different ways you can do a split. And in this dialog, we're going to provide a dash as the text to delimit and click OK for step 15. We'll choose custom, type in a dash, and hit OK. Now we can see that the data has been split out to two different fields. Next, we're going to grab the Product 2 column and remove it because we don't need that for this particular report. We have that button in the top center. And then for Product 1, we're going to rename the column, which we can easily do with a right click. And we'll just name that Product without the trailing number 1. That brings us all the way down to Step 19. Here we're going to go through a longer series of steps for changing the data types of columns. First on the sales query, we're going to look at changing the data type to date and fixed decimal for two fields. So let's go back over and look at our query. And here we have the sales query on the left hand side. We do have a field for date. Our exercise indicates that we want to change the data type drop down to date. Let's go ahead and do that. Data type date appears to already be selected. And for revenue, we want to change that from decimal number to fixed decimal number. Replace current. That'll perform the update. Note, we formatted the zip column for postal code as text earlier to ensure leading zeros are not lost. Next, we can go ahead and open up the date query and do a replace current for data type date on that one. So let's find our date field. Data type is date. Selected. Excellent. Number 24 from international sales query. We're going to take a look at several data type fields. Product ID will become a whole number, which it already is. We want date to be a date. That's selected correctly. We want zip to be text, which it is, units to be a whole number, and revenue to be a fixed decimal number. Right now it's decimal. Let's change it to fixed decimal number. Excellent. Looks good. Moving on to step 26, we're going to take a look at the sales query, and we're going to do an append. So from the home ribbon, we'll find append queries over here on the top right corner. And we're going to click append, append queries. There's an option to append two or three tables. Just leave the two or three selected. Table to append is international sales. And we're going to click OK. You'll now see a new column in the sales table called country. Since international sales had the additional column, Power BI added the column to the sales table when it loaded values from international sales. You'll see null for the default sales because the column did not exist for the table with USA data. We will add the value USA as a data shaping operation. So let's come over here to where we see country. And sure enough, there's a lot of null values. Add conditional column as shown in the figure. So we're going to add a conditional column. We're presented with a formula bar, step 30. The name of the column is going to be country name. Excellent. Select country from the drop down. Yes, equals operator, type null in the values text. Enter USA in the output field. Excellent. Select the drop down under under wise and pick select a column. Select country 
and click OK. So what we're saying here is if the field is null, make it USA and otherwise use what field value exists. We'll click OK to create that new conditional column. Go ahead and save our work too. It's a good habit. Step 38, you will see country name column in the query editor. The original country column is only required as temporary. It's not in the final table for analysis. Right click on country and do remove as shown in the figure. So we can remove a column with both our ribbon toolbar or a right click. This time we'll use a right click. We can now rename country name column to country. Simplicity is good. That helps out end users when building reports. We'll make it country and hit enter. Step 40 is the rename. Step 41 under data type, change the data type of country to text. Right now it's marked as data type any. We'll move that to data type text. When the data is refreshed, it will process through all the applied steps that you've created. Step 42, at first you only see USA data. Click on load more to validate that all countries are included. So when we click a heading, it says list may be incomplete, load more, and that's going to parse through all those CSV records, thousands of them, and look for distinct unique values to show our filter on the column heading. And here we can see all the unique countries. Excellent. That brings us to step 44. So here we're going to take a look at view dependencies dialog for the source of a query. So on that, we can come over to the sales table, which we have in Power BI. And we can do the view ribbon query dependencies up here in the top center. And from that point, we get a diagram that shows all of the various dependencies and CSV files and columns and calculations that merge together to give us the current query that we're looking at. Excellent for troubleshooting. That diagram can be zoomed in or zoomed out as needed. Step 46, let's save the file before we proceed. Go ahead and save that. I'll do apply later. If we don't need the international sales table to load the data model now, let's prevent the table from loading the data model. So let's go over to international sales because it's pulling in a lot of source data and thousands of rows of CSV. We can disable the load. Right click the table, right click on enable load, that'll toggle to turn it off. Appropriate data will load in the sales table each time the model's refreshed. We always have the option of refreshing manually. So at this point we can do file, close and apply. That will apply a series of changes, and then we can save. Close and apply. Here it is rendering all of our changes for sales, date, manufacturer, and product, loading data into the model. Microsoft did a great job here because they're showing the file name and the number of megabytes transferred from each file. With that step complete, we can now save our PBIX file. And we are done with exercise two. Thanks for watching.